the sun come up over that mountain. It's so emotional. Man. But we're glad to have you here this morning. And thank you, especially if you're joining us via the internet. We're always honored that you take time wherever you are to be with us and uh, to worship with us. We're going to do uh, a little different uh, approach here this morning and uh, we're going to sing just a great old, old hymn. And uh, so... Everybody ready to praise the Lord? life. 
Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, that you sent your son to reveal who you really are. That your grace, and your mercy, and your love for us abounds, Father. Even when, God, we miss the mark. And so, Father, we celebrate this day today because your son is not only alive and seated with you today, but through the power of your Holy Spirit, he is alive in each one of us. And so, Father, we give you praise. We thank you for the beautiful sunrise and all the majesty of everything that you have created that we can come together as your children and worship you in spirit and in truth. And so on this day, Father, we pray your presence in this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill this room. Fill our hearts and our lives. Change us from the inside out that we might be better prepared to engage the world around us, that they might see Jesus in us. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us. We ask your blessings today in the most powerful name, that of your son, Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. But I want to begin this morning by reading some, uh, some of my favorite scriptures, especially for the uh, Easter sunrise service. And we're going to be looking this morning uh, at the book of Luke. And so if you have your Bibles or your apps, whatever you use, or if you just want to listen along, we're going to be in Luke chapter 24, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 12. And I want to read this morning from the New Living Translation, and it says this. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, Two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And the men asked, why, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember, very important word for this morning. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. That the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. And so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. Now I want you to hear this. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men. So they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the em empty linen wrappings. 
And then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Very powerful depiction of the sunrise service. The original sunrise service. Several hundred years before the birth of Jesus, a crucial battle raged between two great civilizations, the Greeks and the Persians. They were among the world's superpowers at that time. And the clash of their armies took place on the level fields near a city called Marathon. The battle went on for hours. In many respects, it was a, a fight to the death. And in the end, the outnumbered Greeks, the underdogs in the fight, managed to pull off an unlikely victory over the Persians. But there was a problem. The Senate, the governing body of the Greeks, many miles away in the city of Athens, was about to ratify a treaty of partial surrender and appeasement with the Persians. Knowing what was about to happen, the victorious Greek soldiers sent a runner in full battle gear to cover the 27 miles to Athens to share the good news about their victory. And by the time the young man reached Athens, he had literally run a marathon. The legends from that time say that he was totally spent, that he literally ran himself to death. And in his exhaustion, he was able to utter only one word to the Athenians before he died. Victory! He said, as he collapsed. That one word made a huge difference in the lives of the people of Athens. Instead of a surrender, there was a celebration. In the place of fear, there was peace. And in the place of tears, there was joy. Instead of slavery, there was freedom. The good news of a victory changed everything for a people who rightfully expected defeat. Although it would be a challenge for us as Christ followers to use only one word to summarize Easter, I think that we could all agree that victory does the job pretty well. Amen? <laughs> Victory is what our celebration is about today. We are once again reminded that Easter is our victory celebration. And this morning we watched and meditated on the sun rising in the east I couldn't help but think about what it must have been like on that first day of the week when the women went to the tomb of Jesus. On their way there that morning, they felt the earthquake. They, they knew something was different, even strange. They had come to prepare the body of Jesus with spices only to find that he was not there. They saw that the stone was rolled away. His tomb was open. And then they saw the angels. And the angels questioned the women. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And even though the disciples still didn't believe the women's announcement to them that Jesus had risen from the grave, those words, he is risen, would change forever 
the course of man's attempt to know God. This one fact changes the history of mankind's purpose. It changes the earth's history and purpose. The Bible tells us that one day there will be a new heaven and a, a new earth. And this one fact can change your history. Victory is yours today. And one day, Jesus will burst through the sky just as he burst through the tomb. And once again, nothing, nothing will hold him back. This is our victory in Jesus. And that's what I want to focus on this morning. Three ideas that I want to share with you is that, number one, victory in Jesus is literally a promise remembered. A promise remembered. On Friday, the, the people there in Jerusalem watched as this man Jesus, whom they had welcomed one week earlier with palm branches and praises saying, Hosanna, was now arrested and beaten and scourged to the point of death, condemned to die by crucifixion. They watched and listened as the crowd screamed, Crucify him! Crucify him! Many laughed and ridiculed him. Some spat in his face. The soldiers mocked and beat him as he carried his cross down the Via Della Rosa all the way to Calvary. Family and friends, many of his disciples watched in disbelief as they nailed him to the cross. For those who knew Jesus, suddenly their hopes were replaced with fear and doubt. You see, they had forgotten the promise. The promise that Jesus made when he said of himself in Luke chapter 18, he said, for he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him. And the third day, he will rise again. For them, as well as for us, there is a, a truth that is worth remembering. And the truth is this, that with each nail that pierced his hands and feet, with each drop of blood, with each word that he uttered from the cross, Christ fulfilled God's promise to you. And to me, and with his dying breath, he said, it is finished. Why would he do it? Why would he be willing to allow the government, the religious leaders, to, to murder him? You think about that. What would make you turn away from glory? Laying down your life to save the world.
traded the stars above, you gave it all for love, all for love, you gave it all for love, with every drop of blood, you gave it all for love. Our victory in Jesus is also based on a promise that's realized. You see, the religious leaders of the day were so paranoid about what Jesus' disciples might try in order to prove that he had risen from the dead that they demanded that the tomb be sealed from the outside with chains. Guards were posted for protection from anyone who might try to steal the body of Jesus. The Roman seal was stamped on the rock covering the opening so that no one dared attempt to enter the tomb. So I thought about that this week. I, I'm reminded that, you know, this is how the enemy of your soul works today. That he will use all the ways of the world to keep you from Jesus. He'll use religion. He'll use the government. He'll use the skeptics. He'll use any means to deceive you and to convince you that Jesus is not relevant to your life situation. You see, today, today we have the advantage of knowing that it was not the end. And even though things looked dim and devastating, even though the tomb was sealed, Jesus was busy. Jesus was busy not only taking on the sin of the world, but through his death, his burial, and more importantly, his resurrection, Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. Remember what Jesus said to Martha concerning 
her brother Lazarus. This took place in John chapter 11. And Martha was speaking to Jesus and Martha said, Master, if, if you'd been here, if you had just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. And Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. Martha replied quickly. She said, I know that he'll be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. And Jesus said this. He said, you don't have to wait for the end. I am right now resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. And then he asks this question to Martha. He says, do you believe this? You see, that is the ultimate question. Do you believe this? Do you realize all that Christ accomplished for you? There's an old saying that pastors and teachers have used for years and it goes like this. It says, if you were the only person on earth, Jesus still would have come for you. Now, even though this sounds like a, an example of an exaggerated statement just to prove a point, I do believe that there is a precedent in scripture to support this statement. Do you remember the parable of the lost sheep that Jesus told to the religious leaders? It's the story of a shepherd who once realizes that one of his sheep has wandered off, leaves the 99 sheep to find the lost sheep. And when the shepherd finds the lost sheep, he takes the, the sheep into his arms and he places the sheep around his shoulders. Incidentally, this illustration of the shepherd carrying the sheep on his shoulders was the original figure used to identify Christians before people began identifying Christianity with crosses. And in this parable, Jesus paints with words a, a beautiful picture of God's grace and his desire to see the lost return to him. God literally bankrupted heaven in order to pursue us with his love. By sending his son Jesus the sacrificial lamb became the shepherd who leads us all back to the loving arms of God's grace. You see, human nature, when seeking power, seeks honor for itself and works overtime to avoid shame. God, on the other hand, seeks to glorify himself through us, his sheep, his sons, and his daughters. And despite having 99 other sheep, despite the obvious rebellion of his lost sheep, God not only joyfully receives it back into the fold, but he pursues this lost sheep with his love until he rescues it. 
places it around his shoulders. It's the th same thing that he does for us when we surrender our lives and return to him. But there's a, a dilemma. You see, yesterday was Saturday. Saturday's kind of called the in-between times. Do you ever have in-between times in your life? When you just feel like uh, that God's not really close by. They're, they're, you just don't sense his presence. You don't feel him in the trials that you're facing. But so the question I want to ask you this morning is, where, where are you on this journey of faith? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you tired of struggling with the same old struggles? Tired of living the same old way, doing the same old things with the same old attitudes, yet expecting different results. I think that's a definition for something. <laughs> There's an author and teacher, his name's Brian McLaren, and he writes this. He says, in the way that Jesus touched untouchables and refused to condemn even the most notorious of sinners, he has embodied for us a very different vision of what God is like. And if Jesus is showing us something so radical about God, what is he telling us about ourselves? What kind of world have we made? What kind of people have we become? You see, when, when Jesus was praying in the garden before his arrest, Jesus asked the Father if there could be any other way. And now, obviously, it's clear there could be no other way to show us what God is truly like. You see, God is not revealed in a, a militant king centered on killing and conquest and violence and hate and division. God is revealed in this crucified man. Giving of himself up to his very last breath. Giving and forgiving. And this morning, he stands at your heart's door, resurrected, fully alive, and he knocks. If you've ever seen that picture, there's only one door handle, and it's only on the inside. And so he stands at the door and he knocks. So will you open the door and once again let him in? Are you ready to lose the chains that bind you? 
Are you ready to experience a change, a life change, a change of direction? Well, I believe that Jesus' word to us today is what he told us in John 10.10. 10. He said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it abundant. And so I think Jesus' word to us today is there, there's a better life. The question is, are you ready to receive it? You think about it as I sing this song. chains he'll break them give him the chance the last idea is that our victory in Jesus is a promise we've received you know one
one, one of the most interesting facts about the resurrection is one that is so often overlooked. You see, many people focus on the fact that, that the stone was rolled away so that Jesus could come out to stand at the entrance in all of his heavenly glory to proclaim to the world that he had risen from the dead. But the truth is, the truth is that the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out, but to let us in. To see for ourselves the proof that he is risen. On that glorious morning, Jesus delivered the final blow to Satan and all of his emissaries. You see, Satan, much like the religious leaders, thought that he had won. Jesus was dead. The religious leaders, deceived by Satan, thought without a shadow of a doubt, they had won. Jesus was dead. The scapegoat is in the grave. Sealed with the Roman seal. Nobody would walk past that. But what the Roman government and the religious leaders didn't realize was That God's grace shone bright on that resurrection morning as Jesus walked out of the grave. And by doing so, he not only delivered a defeating blow to Satan and all of his works, but he delivered us. So that whosoever. Oh, wait a minute, Teddy. <laughs> that whosoever, just the religious people, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing your grace to cover us and to know that it is in the finished work of Christ that we have been not set free, there's two verses in the King James Bible that I absolutely love above all other translations. One of them is John 8, 32. And it says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Not set you free. That's like turning you loose on your own. I won't know that. Try that. I'm not good at it. <laughs> the accomplished and finished work of Christ makes you free. Free to live now. Free to live for eternity. That is the victory of God's promise to each one of us today. And the resurrection of Jesus changes the faith, face of death for all of his people. And here's why. Because death is no longer a prison, but a passageway into the presence of God. Victory in Jesus. <laughs> author and writer Clarence W. Hall he says e 
Easter says that you can put truth in a grave, but it won't stay there. Watchman Nee, great Chinese Christian leader in the 1930s, one of the men that truly influenced my life as an early believer. He says this, he says, our old history ends with the cross. Our new history begins with the resurrection. Our Lord has written the promise, Martin Luther says, our Lord has written the promise of resurrection, not in books alone, not in just books alone, but in every leaf in springtime. <laughs> he is in everything. He is in all of us. You see, for those of us who have accepted God's amazing grace, to me, our only, our only expression could be the highest form of praise.
So now it comes to my favorite part of this service. And every time we have communion. And I want us to honor the Lord today by following through with his commandment. You see, his command to the, his disciples and to us this morning was and is, do this in remembrance of me. We have what we call open communion. And so we, we invite you today to the table. Bring all your stuff, all your struggles, all the things that you feel like you're not worthy of celebrating, bring it to the table. I promise you, it's nothing that Jesus hadn't seen before. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do communion a little different today. Bobby and Dawn are going to, uh, to lead us in our communion service. But today, we, we had such a, a wonderful turnout that we did, decided to do it outside this morning. And so we want to end our service today where we began. Experiencing the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And so I'm going to invite Bobby and Dawn to prepare us. Bobby, anything you would like to share before you go and share with the group? I'm just so proud <laughs> that that table, no one will ever be turned away. Amen. Amen. As long as there's a Teddy Baker or Bobby Trivet, no one will be turned away from Jesus' table. No one. Amen. 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 And so this morning, I, I want to uh, just lead us in a, in a prayer. And I said it's an open communion. The table is open to everyone. And so regardless of where you're at or where you think you're at, <laughs> no matter how old you are young and old we want you to celebrate this resurrection Sunday by sharing communion with us as you take communion our service will be complete and you're free to go I pray that you will take this resurrection day and remember that every day is resurrection day it's not just once a year. It's up to us to live that way. Teddy. <laughs> uh, I miss the mark a lot. Let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, as we come to this place, to do this in remembrance of your Son, we pray your blessings on this group of people, this fellowship. Father, that we would continue to, to be the conduit, the linkage between you and the people that we come in contact with, that they might again be able to see Jesus in us. Help us to be that kind of witness for you, Lord, that we can use words if we have to. But we wanted to, want them to see it in us first. Help us to remember the things, Father, that you were doing in our life. As we take the blood and the, and the body, Father, we, we pray that you would continue to work in us through the power of your Holy Spirit to remind us of the promise that we have, the victory that we have in Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 We're going to file out, and if you will, just uh, you can be.
fouled out there. Thank you for coming this morning. God bless you guys. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, we saw it. And then it had two strips behind it like that it was the three crosses. John 50,000 had to get pictures of it too. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah.
Take all day. Making that one good here. <laughs> They're empty, so I don't know how good that is. Okay. 